I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. And today we're going to be talking about Windows Virtual Desktop in a 100% cloud setup. So we're going to use Azure Active Directory Domain Services and FS Logix over an Azure Files storage account. So if you haven't done it already, please click on that subscribe button. It really does help us out to keep making videos as well as to keep us promoted with the YouTube algorithm so that way more people can find our content. And please give us some comments below on things that you're interested in. This video in particular comes from a session that I did with some of my clients where they were wanting to deploy Windows Virtual Desktop in a completely cloud-based scenario. They didn't have any on-premise resources, no traditional server or infrastructure, and they wanted to still deploy WVD. And this is basically what we went through to get that going. So first thing we're gonna do is look over at the Azure portal. So we're going to need several things as we start off here. First of all, this is, as I said, going to be a completely cloud-based deployment. So what that means is that we're first going to need an Azure Active Directory. Now, thankfully, we already have this. We've been using this as part of our WVD series for quite a while. So with that, we're ready to start building Active Directory domain services. Now, for anyone who wants more information on this from our documentation, you can go to products go to Identity and Azure AD Domain Services. The other thing we're going to be using in our documentation is going to be under Products, and that would be under Storage and then File Storage, and particularly under the How To Guides and then under Secure, we're going to need this Enable Azure AD Authentication over SMB. So in order for us to use an Azure storage account for our FSLogix Windows Virtual Desktop user profiles, we need to have a storage account that can use Azure AD Domain Services for its authentication. Okay, and we have an integration for this, which is all listed here in our docs. There's quite a few steps and we'll be going through that, but I just wanted you to know where it was. All right, so let's start building. So we'll hit create. And then the first thing we have to do is give ourselves a domain name. Now I'm going to name mine adds.msazureacademy.com. So I'll hit OK here. And now we need to select the network and I've already got one pre-staged and we'll use an existing subnet as well. And we'll use the one for our ADDS servers and we'll hit OK. This is the group that's going to allow you to manage the domain, join computers to the domain, that type of thing. So we need to add some users. So I'll click add members and those have been added and we can click the little breadcrumb here to go back and then hit OK. Now, when it comes to the synchronization, this is basically the same thing as Azure AD Connect, except it's running as a managed service. So you can't go in there like you can on normal AD Connect and manipulate it and view the metaverse and, and all that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, give me some comments down below and we'll make a, a video on Azure AD Connect and, and we'll walk through some of those steps. But here we have the option of choosing scoped or all of our groups. Now, if we choose scoped, then that means we have to select which groups we have that we want to synchronize over. If we don't know, we can just say synchronize all. So either way, this would work. So I will choose to synchronize all just to make it a little bit easier and we'll hit okay. And that's it. So it's a quick five step process in order to stand up a managed domain controller service and we'll hit okay. Now, while this is going, you should be aware that this process takes roughly 30 minutes or so to deploy. And when you're done, you'll have two domain controllers that are deployed as part of the service. All right, so my ADDS domain has finished being built and we'll just look at it real briefly here. So this is what the screen looks like. So it is a domain controller managed service and the way that it works, basically data gets populated in here from Azure Active Directory and this is what the resources are uh, that get deployed. So you can see you don't see virtual machines, you just see the service itself, and then it has a load balancer and network cards and NSG and a public IP address. So not a lot here, but uh, it will do the job for us. So now we're just gonna build out WVD, only this time when we create our session host, we're gonna be using the GitHub repository official templates for Windows Virtual Desktop, and we'll just click our Deploy to Azure button here, and this will be linked in the description below. And now we just need to fill this out however we want to build it. And I'll be deploying to my session host resource group using server 2016 images from our gallery. And I've got my prefix here. I'll be only building two VMs. 
And then I will be using my Azure AD domain services domain to join. So I have to specify that as well as which users are part of that special admin group that we looked at that have permissions to join the domain. And I put in here the info for my network and my subnet as well as my tenant information. Now I am additionally uh, using the Azure Active Directory service principal ID for permission. And to set that up, we need a script. So I've got a script here that will do this. Basically you create a connection over PowerShell to Azure Active Directory, and then we create a new service principal. And there's the service principal name that'll show up in the Azure AD portal. And we're gonna grab from there the object ID, create a role assignment of RDS owner for that, and then enter those credentials into the connect to Azure Remote Desktop Services link. And then once we do that, we'll be able to then uh, spit out values here for our Azure Active Directory ID, service principal ID, which is the application ID we need for the portal, and for the service principal's password. When you run this script, you will get the appropriate values, and then we can enter them back in the portal. And that uh, link to that script will be in my description at the bottom as well, so you can get that off my GitHub. And here's the values that I've entered for that. And there's the app ID and the password, of course, is secret. And then the service principal value here is set to true. And then we'll be deploying this into the location where our resource group is. All right, so let's hit purchase. So our WVD instance has finished building and we've got our two VMs. And I have already logged on to the web UI as my join domain user and I'll sign in. And we're in. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to map a drive to Azure storage so that our FS logics profile can be set up. So we'll add a storage account. We named our storage account here AAWVD FS logics 00 and we're going to use locally redundant storage of a Gen 2 storage account. So we'll just create that and that'll take a moment. Right. Now that our storage account is complete, we'll click the go to resource button. And what we have to set up here is under configuration. And we have to change this box from identity based directory service for Azure file authentication from none to Azure Active Directory domain services. And we'll hit save. Now in the past, there has been uh, some custom roles that you had to create at this point in order to make this work. And then you had to assign those roles to the Azure file share directly. And uh, that got to be kind of a cumbersome process. So recently the storage team has created some new roles. So we'll go into access control on our storage account and add a new role assignment. And those new roles are down here and it is storage file data SMB share for contributor reader and elevated contributor. And the difference here basically you can see in the tooltip is the elevated contributor can read and write and delete and modify NTFS permissions. So this role only works with this Azure Active Directory domain services integration. So we need that role and we'll add that for our AAD DC administrators because we need to set permissions on these file shares. And then we'll also add a role for the contributor function of that share and do the same user. So when we look at our role assignments here, we see that we've got our contributor and our elevated contributor that are set up. And we also need to create ourselves a share. So in the blade here, I'll go to files and then I'll create a new file share and I'll call it WVD profiles. And you can make the size here whatever it is that you want. Uh, you need to account for the fact of how many users you will have, how much data each user will have in their profile versus how you're storing data through something else like OneDrive or, or other avenues of storing data. So I'm just going to make the share five terabytes just to make it easy and I will hit create. And with a standard file share, the size of the share itself does not matter. In premium files, it does. You do get billed based on the size of the shares that you create. Now we need two things in order to make this connection work and we can find them in our file 
file share if we push the connect button and you do have several different things here for connecting and mounting this file share on your system basically you need port 445 open from wherever this system is over to Azure files and then we have Windows Linux and Mac OS here for you to just copy the text here use it on your system and mount the drive and you do have to have SMB 3.0 in order to make this work outside of Azure inside of Azure uh, you can do this with like Windows 7 systems because those only support SMB 2.0 but in Azure we allow that connection outside of Azure encryption is required so you need SMB 3 so I will copy the one for our command line here and go back to WVD and we'll open our notepad so now we have these two commands and the first command is going to store in the Windows credential vault the username and password for this connection and then we're going to map the connection so we need to do this in our command prompt and you do have to be an administrator on the box to make this work so our command has been entered so now if we go to the control panel and we open the credential manager under the Windows credentials we now have a saved credential for this particular connection and then we run our net use command which will map the drive and it will be persistent and it is successful so now we can map to the Z drive and there's currently nothing here and we can do a make directory and we can see that that is created so if we go back to Azure storage now and in our file share we can see that we have a test folder so let's delete this test folder because we don't really need that and if we do that we go back here and we see that that delete has been successful so now that we've got that now we need to set the NTFS permission so if we right click on the share here and go to properties and under security you can see now this has been updated to look like a normal Windows file share and that is again thanks to the recent changes that the storage account team has done as this particular feature for ADFS integration with Azure files has gone generally available so we can see we've got our basic users and they have the regular user rights and our administrators have full control so we do need to edit the security permissions here we need to add our WVD users group so we get our domain group and user picker here so we'll put in WVD and do a check name and there is our WVD users group we'll hit OK and grant full control to that and this was in place of uh, the way that you used to have to do this was either with the set ACL command or the I cackles commands in order to be able to grant this permission so this is a much better user experience and so now that that has been done those users now have access to this share so at this point we do not need this storage account key information anymore we should be able to map this share from any other user that we log on to who is a member of that group and that should all be authenticated through Azure Active Directory domain services now while we are here the one other thing that we do have to do is install the FS logics agent and since we're on a 64-bit OS we need our 64-bit folder release and then the FS logics app setup so we'll run that and agree to the license terms and click install and that'll be done in a moment so while that is going let's open up our reg editor okay and that's finished now under the registry we go to HK local machine software FS logics and here we need to create a new registry key so we'll right click here create a new key and that key will be called profiles and then inside that key we need a new D word and that will be called enabled and it needs a value of one then we need a new multi string value and that will be called VHD locations and we'll put in here the UNC path to our file share which is the Azure storage account dot file dot core dot windows dot net slash share name which in my case is WVD profiles and we'll hit OK All right so that is telling this system that the next time a user logs in to Windows Virtual Desktop that they should be using a centrally located profile now I'm also going to export this key because we have another system that we have to set up so I've just gone to the C dollar share of my other VM and I'll create a new folder called temp and I'll put those files in that location so that I can grab them easily from there.
Okay, so that's complete. So let's log off of this VM. And now to ensure that I get on the other box, I'm going to go back to the web management portal. And I was logged on to server one. So we'll select that and I'll click edit. And now we'll change the allow new sessions to no and hit update. And now we should be logged on to the zero box. So we'll log back in through our web interface. So the first thing that we want to test here is that we do have direct access to the share without needing permissions. So here is the link to our share, which I'll copy. And then we'll open the control panel and we'll open the credential manager and go to Windows credentials. And as you can see, there are no credentials stored here. So in our file explorer, we'll just go to the share and you can see we got direct access to the share without having to provide any credentials. That's because of the Azure Active Directory integration. So that part is great. Now we need to set up FS logics. And now let's double click on a reg key and we'll say yes to add it to the registry. And then we'll just verify HK local machine software FS logics profiles. And there it is to be sure that this is set up. The one thing that you do have to do is make sure that any users that are attempting to log in do not already have a profile. So I'm going to remove these profiles. And remember, this is the only box that someone can currently log on to. And now here I've opened the Windows Remote Desktop client for Windows Virtual Desktop and we'll click subscribe. And I'll sign in with one of my other users. And this time we'll use Nova and we'll hit next and put in our password. And you can see Nova only has access to these remote applications. So we'll click on calculator because that opens pretty quick. And if we click the show details button here, you can see FS logics is running in the background, taking Nova's profile and storing it in Azure files. And now that that's done, there is our remote application. So in the portal, we'll open our storage account and we'll go to Azure files and into our user profiles share. And there is the Nova profile. So it's stored here in Azure files directly without the need of some other file server working in conjunction with Azure AD domain services in order to provide user profiles through FS logics for Windows Virtual Desktop. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at how to use Windows Virtual Desktop in a completely cloud only setup with Azure AD domain services, storing our profiles inside our storage account file shares with Azure AD domain services integration. So if you thought that this video was good, click that thumbs up and don't forget to click on the subscribe button. It really does help us out a lot. And give me some comments below on which of these types of scenarios you prefer, completely cloud only or the other approach, which would be more traditional, I would say. And while you're down there, click on the notification bell so that you can get an email when our new videos come out, which is roughly once a week. And we'll see you next time. Happy learning.